Hello there and welcome back to my YouTube channel James here as ever for today's video on how you can pass your upcoming ACCA exam if you've previously failed before. So really you're watching this video if one you have failed an ACCA exam or two if you've got a friend who you really want to support maybe they're your study buddy then send them these tips send them this video across and trust me it'll help. The reason why I know it'll help is I'm an ACCA qualified member from the UK and I have failed and I'm quite open to admit this as well two ACCA exams. It was the advanced taxation and the advanced audits one. So I'm going to take you through today my top five tips as to what I learned from failing ACCA exams and how you can benefit from them as well. Completely honest because as you all know, well in fact if you are new to visiting my channel it is completely 100% student led because I actually posted out on my Instagram feed this post up here as you can see. I'm getting better at the editing as well and I was a bit overwhelmed with the actual response really because there was over 60 responses and a shout out to Tawane on this video I'm really sorry yours was up at the top but this video is dedicated to you and I really hope it helps if you are new to the channel feel free to subscribe the button will be at the bottom along with any comments and of course feel free to like the video because I hope it really will help you it's all from my experiences there's no sort of gimmicks or anything on those lines it's all sort of raw material that uh, I'll take you through today from my experiences that allowed me to qualify as an ACCA member and it'll help you get across that line as well because I know it's a difficult place to be if you found an exam and then you've got to bring yourself back to sit the exam again and to pass it as well. So I'm going to take you through the five key areas today that I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you take up as well. So without any further ado, I think we should get started as to going through these one by one. So if you've got a pen and paper, make sure we're going to get these down as well because there's loads and loads of points I want to make sure you get across because as you saw from the post, and feel free to follow me on Instagram, all of my other contact details are in the description of this video. It's all designed to help you watching this. So first of all, first tip, really, really, really important, number one, write down your fail mark. Whew, I know, we're starting off big, it's all right. Write down your fail mark. So regardless of what it is, if it's if it's a 41 or the dreaded, and for anyone who is uh, used to my channel as well, we run on a, a strict budget on here as well, but uh, if it's a 49 or a 31 or a 22, I don't, I don't mind, whatever it may be, write it down and actually do it on pen and paper as well. This is really key because it's designed so that you start to think about it, you start to go through it in your mind and you'll see them, well, we'll come on to where I think you should actually put them. Now, in actually coming to actually make this video, I went through my notes and I found on there my old one, look at that just a bit of pen and I scribbled it down and the reason why I had it on there was it's on the back of my notes which we'll come on to later as to good techniques to go through but uh, audit, <laughs> advanced audit on there with my number 41 on the back there as well which uh, I had gosh it made a difference and for anyone out there who thinks oh James you've just written that down hold on stay with me this is my bag from Kaplan doing P7 the advanced audit these are all my notes in here as well. It's all there for you. It's all legit. Look, I'll even give you my textbook. There you go. There it was. So coming from experience, this is what it relates to as well. Look at all those notes I end up going through. And we go through these on the channel as well. So whichever topic you're doing, I'm going to be doing videos just for you, just to help you out. But coming back on to the actual point of the video here now for number one about writing down your fail mark we've got to look at this in a positive light okay let's see it positively and where are we going to actually talk about this well you've got to think that you've already made progress okay it's all about a learning curve the, the ACCA journey is ones of ups and downs I'm very well aware of that as well but you've got to look on the bright side and getting that positive mindset as well the way I used always used to think about this was from my from my 41 I'll bring it up on here I don't really usually do videos with props but I always used to think look 
imagine there's a student who's just doing this exam from the start now, okay? I'm 41 marks ahead of them. I just need to find another 9. That's all it relates to. So whether you've got 49 or, or whatever it may be, I'm only looking for one more mark. Look how far ahead. Imagine. Imagine if I was starting to do this exam again from scratch, where I've not got the experience, I've not had that uh, sort of mindset and that learning curve that you've already had from taking the exam before, and you've just got to find those extra marks to get you over that 50 plus level as well. When you change your mindset and you start thinking about it on those lines as to, even if you've got a 49, just go, well, I'm going to take what I've done from last time, put it all together, I'm going to learn from my experiences, we're making progress, and I've got to find one more mark. Automatically, you're thinking in your mind, this is doable. Yes, I'm, I quite fancy this. Yes, I'm going to give it a really good go. And our marks ahead. This is my experience. I've got that positive mindset back and that learning curve as well because you've, you've been there, you've done that, you've, you've been through the core text as you've seen down there, you've done the revision notes. It's a case of coming back stronger, looking on the bright side, thinking positively and you're going to be fine going into that next ACCA exam. So that is tip number one, write down your fail mark. Trust me, it'll help you and then put it up. Oh. Oh, James, getting too keen now, too keen. Where are you going to put that fail mark? Well, I'd recommend actually writing it down twice because from my experience as a tutor now as well and from uh, being a student, I would put one in my bedroom, definitely, so that every time when I was waking up, going to bed, I would see it every day. And then secondly, I'd, I'd put the other one in, in the lounge. The reason for this is students and people out there, if they've had a long day at work, they come in, Nine times out of ten, you'll sort of lay on your bed, maybe play on your phone, procrastinate away. But if you have that 41, that 49, that 32, whatever it may be, looking back at you, wow, straight away, your mind changes into that positive mindset to say, look, I know I'm tired. It's been a long day at work. However, I've got to get going on this. I do not want that feeling again of failing another ACCA exam on there. And also, pop it in your lounge as well, because if you sit down on your sofa, anything on those lines, wanting to watch television or sort of just fluttering time away, you'll see that figure. Other people will see that figure, maybe in your family, your partner, children, whatever it may be, and they'll see it and they'll go, James, why aren't you, why aren't you revising? Why are you, why are you sat on the sofa? Pew. Welcome to accountability, and then you getting into that positive mindset again. Write it down twice, and when you visually write it down, you see yourself doing it, you start to picture it as well as, oh my, I don't want 41, I don't want 49 again. So, just to reiterate that as well, write down tip number one, your fail mark. Trust me, it'll help you go, it'll go so far, it's so underrated, and I would definitely, definitely recommend it. Now, Coming on to point number two, two out of five. Here we go. Let's rock and roll and go through it now. Tip number two, reflect, clear your mind and consolidate. Well, you see, you even got an accounting word in there. But I hear you saying to me, James, James, what, whoa, 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 backtrack. What are you on about now? Okay. First of all, we've, we've got to reflect on this. But the, one of the key things get, that gets so overlooked is a case of, well, when you're doing these exams and then you have the results, people want to know how you've done. So the first thing is, if you have failed, get explaining it out the way to family, friends, bosses, uh, your teachers, your tutors, whoever it may be, they'll be asking. What I used to do is when I failed was, okay, um, people at work are probably going to have to know for my studying contract. Family are going to ask because they've seen me stuttering, studying night and day. I'm just going to get out of the way in a, in a day or two, send it across so it's, so it's out of my mind. They know it's okay. Brilliant. Okay. I don't have to think about it anymore. I'm more interested about thinking how I can improve going into next time. And you'll find as well by doing this, getting that honesty off your chest, if they are true friends, they will support you. They'll say, oh, well, how are you going to, to change going forward? Or how can I actually help you in your studying time? Or if you, if you live with your parents or if you've got any children, then you say, how can we work something out better? They will support you. It's a collective uh, sort of decision as well as to, well, 
we're all in this together. Yes, you're the one sitting it, but hopefully work will support you as well as to, okay, well, can we actually work with you better in terms of maybe that week leading up to your exam? Can we structure your work schedule so that you're focused on passing the exam with uh, your actual work responsibilities as well? And you'll be surprised how people can reach out, offer expertise and advice as well. So that's the first thing, getting out of the way, get away explaining it as well. The next thing that is, is so overlooked and, and so worth a check is if you're actually going through a learning provider, some of them actually have pass-fail guarantees. So if you've actually failed an exam, you won't have to pay any costs going into the next one. You've got to check this in the actual contract. Or if you are going to go to a new provider as well, then they actually have it. If you if you do some of the mock tests, you attend all the, all the stuff and uh, submit all the required documents, even if you fail it, you can have the next attempt for free. So it's definitely worth a check. Make sure you get that down because it could save you thousands of pounds, especially if you're doing face-to-face -to -face tuition. The next thing, as you could see from my bag down there, the main thing that, again, to consolidate and clear your mind is you've, you've got to collate all of those notes together, nice orderly fashion. We're going to take a day on doing this as well because it's all designed to sort of reset your mind. So make sure all the old notes are together, past papers are all together. It's not sort of all clustered and ah, I know it's been when you're working up until the last minute before the exam. Your notes are everywhere. You're not really structured in terms of it. You're just trying to cram as much as possible. Let's get them all neat and tidy on there, all ready to go again. And it and it'll be a sort of thing as a reflection to going through, piling them all up to say, look how far ahead I am. Oh, imagine I had all of this before I was starting last time. Well, hang on, this is what is happening this time. So this is where, when you're actually going to go back to those notes again, that you're going to have to do, they're all nicely ordered, clear, concise, and actually quite appealing to get stuck into. So if you're going to reread through the chapters, you know all of your notes, post-its, underlining areas or sh extra sheets are all in order, nice and easy to actually digest again, and you feel a bit more re-energized as well to get stuck into it. So. The other thing in regards to an actual fail is we've got to shake it up. You've got to shake yourself up and, and take your mind off it. So taking a break is so underrated, but it's a case of it works for different people around your different commitments. So for me, it was a case of just going for, going for a walk or going for a jog, something on those lines, doing something different for the day. So it's sort of it's designed so that clear your notes in the morning, go do an activity or something on the lines in the afternoon, reset your mind, do something new, and then come back the following day, the following week, re-energized. It could be a weekend away if you're lucky enough. Um, for me personally, I went for a nice, nice run, thought about uh, how I'm going to improve for next time. I was re-energized and I had a good, good mentality, good positive mindset going back into it. And by doing this, it actually puts things into perspective for you, uh, where you sort of stop, take a moment as well, consolidate, as I said. You're going to get those notes all together, piled up, all ready to go. Put it into perspective to say, look, if, if you found a an optional paper or a strategic paper, or even a foundation paper. Just think, look how far you've come since you started as well, or look how many other students are, that they may be starting their ACCA journey, you're miles ahead of them in terms of it, but you've been in that situation before. This is the adversity where you put things into perspective as to look at the opportunity I have to actually tackle this exam again, go forward in terms of with a positive mindset, and I have that perspective of, look, I've got down my fail figure, I know how many more marks I need to do, and I'm going to go into this with a real positive mindset, and getting things all together really helps when you reflect, clear your mind, and consolidate on this as well. So underrated that when it comes to game time again, when you sit down at your desk or wherever you do your work, and you're opening up those notes for the first time, positive mind all together, and it's looking appealing, and you're ready to get stuck into it as well. It's a complete mindset change that you're in the right right frame of mind going into it. So that is tip number two. Reflect, clear your mind, and consolidate. Really important there. I'd highly recommend you take that up as well. Well, we've got to come on to point three now on here. And point three is, uh, is something which, yes, it just seems like a normal thing in terms of it, but you'd be stuck staggered how many people don't do this but number three book your retake that that's that, that is paramount for me 
And also, the earlier you do it, the better. The way ACCA's examinations are that if you book a bit early, you actually get some money off it as well uh, in terms of it. Um, but I, I speak with students around the world, whether I'm doing a talk for them or if I get a message or if they comment in the, in the YouTube uh, uh, comments below, anything on those lines that I reply to, how many people just put it off and put it off and put it off just think about that as, well, that's another day gone, that's another week gone, that's another potential month gone as well, especially if, and, and you get charged extra for the fees if you, if you book later. The reason why it's so key to actually book it for you is you're holding yourself accountable. So by not putting it off, you can actually say, I'm ready for this. I know the date, I know how many weeks I've got before then. And we can just start to actually develop a plan around that as well. The main things is, well, when you booked it, put it in your calendar, put it in your in your phone, put it, uh, show it at work. I don't mind, okay? Put it on a post-it in front of your computer so that you actually see it every day and you go, oh my word, that date is that date is there. That's an important date in 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 my world. Birthday is very important. Christmas might be important. Um, Maybe your wife's day, birthday is very important, anniversary, and now your ACCA examination date is very important as well. You won't forget it. The reason why this is really key is, think about it that you're not going to panic now. You are learning from your experiences, and think about it as well as to, well, you're not alone. There are actual you're going to come at it in a better way, you're going to do better about it, and there are going to be other students out there around the world so it's a case of it's not designed to panic you in terms of, oh, book my exam, what am I going to do? No, it's all about you've learned from your experiences, you've booked the exam, you know how many weeks you've got leading up to it, you're not alone, that you can connect with other students from around the world. This is where two things that I would be particularly going to write down now. If you didn't have one before, try and get yourself a, a study buddy, someone maybe from your class, it might be online, it may be face to face, you can interact with and network with, who that you can hold each other accountable that when those weeks tick down in terms of before the exam, you've got someone to speak to. And if, if you can't find anyone, there, there are the online forums, but good key thing to get down, this is really important that will help everyone out there, ACCA have a learning community, it's called, where you can log in using your normal credentials and put any sort of tips out there uh, in terms of your particular exam. If you want to share this video on there to help other students, feel free to, completely free, and it's definitely going to help you out by doing this. The key thing to remember is, next thing that I would have under this section for booking retake is if at the end of all this you're thinking oh I'm there in front of my computer I don't want to book it James just remember and this is really important remember your why remember your why in other words when you're going on to your my ACCA why are you doing this and your why would be different to my why my why from my experiences was well I want to uh, progress within my actual career I didn't know sort of which industry I wanted to go into, but I knew by completing the examinations, I would actually be uh, have more opportunity to go work around the world in different sectors, the benefits of ACCA. But my also why was, well, from a family perspective, you want to make your, your parents proud in terms of it. And uh, and also it's a case of doing it for yourself. It's, it's progression in your career. It's going to take you on to new potential opportunities and open so many more doors. Your why could be, well, maybe for uh, for your partner, or it could be for your children, for example, to lead, again, to more opportunities. I don't know. It depends on in terms of who you look up to and understanding what is your why. So pop it down. Work out what your why is, and before you know it, it comes on to that positive mindset where you may have had that long day at work, you're really tired, you're really lethargic, but... You look at your number that you had on your fail mark, you remember your why, and before you know it, you'll get a surge of energy. You'll put in that extra time, and that is going to be the difference between you potentially failing or passing. That is the key thing. That's the whole point of the video. So that is tip number three. Book your retake. Hold yourself accountable and know your why. Fundamental, if you ask me on there. But we've now got to come on to tip number four now. I mean, steady on your hand. I know you're going to get loads down from this as well. But tip number four, and this is quite an interesting one as well. Tip number four, where did it go wrong for you? Where did it go wrong for you? 
And this is where you've got to be honest with yourself. So it doesn't matter about your brothers, sisters, mums, tutors, whoever, your bosses at work. This is where you have to have a heart to heart with yourself. Be honest as to where did it go wrong for you. So I'll ask you some questions to get the ball rolling in terms of this. So was it possibly a, a lack of discipline in terms of did you actually give yourself did you give yourself enough time perhaps as well um, bad planning did you say oh you know I'll do some after work came in from home sat on your sofa watched some TV and then three potential hours of ACCA re revision didn't didn't happen maybe you didn't maybe you didn't watch enough uh, lectures or seminars in regards to it Maybe you didn't uh, read the core text or do the key one on here. I'll, I'll ask you the question. Did you do enough past papers as well? If you want access to all of my actual videos, check out um, the rest of my channel. There are specific videos for each uh, subject from ACCA and the study tips as well. They will definitely help you. This all relates to having that heart to heart for yourself because there will be a reason. There will be a reason. There is always a reason. But this is getting down to the core as to why that was the case. Mine was in the past, especially with the audit and assurance, it was a case of, well, I wasn't specific enough uh, in my actual answer technique, uh, which I found when I actually reviewed some of my old past papers and uh, question practice as well. I didn't refer back to the scenario enough and I wasn't going into enough detail, plus poor time management. So when I was going through my past papers again, redoing them, I knew exactly what I needed to target from there. The main thing as well, and I, I definitely get this jotted down, try not to think of this as a failure. You've got to think of it as a lesson. It's a lesson to yourself. And when you think of it as a lesson, you learn from it as well. You're learning from your experiences. So when you're actually reviewing your notes on here, it's going to make a massive difference. If your mindset is, I'm, I'm learning every day, and every day I learn, that's more marks in the bank for me that is going to actually help myself in terms of it. But I can, but I can hear you saying to me now, James, it's a case of, I can't, I can't work it out. I still can't work it out, and I don't know why I failed. And it's a case of I had a plan, and all this, all this other malarkey, should I say? Okay, okay. I have something for you. First of all, you've got to go read the external examiner's report for your particular uh, examination that you've done. This is free on the ACCA's website. I've done a video on this as well where you can find it. Go and find the ACCA uh, past papers for it as well with the external examiner's report. Reflect on it and then also do a past paper yourself. Okay, Do a past paper yourself. Do it to time and then mark it yourself and see what mark you get in terms of it. Mark it through, have a go, do it to time, like I said, and then see how you get on. If you get if you get if you get over fifty on that, okay, well, you maybe you've improved in terms of your technique. Who knows? But you've got to ask for help in terms of it. Something went wrong. But it's a case of different people have different ideas. So reach out in terms of these sort of things. I put out free content on here. And um, if not, you know, feel free to comment below. I'll answer all of them as I always do. You can reach out to tutors online, there are online formats as well uh, in terms of actual groups and communities out there. As I said, there's the ACCA learning community. You just simply pop on there. Oh, uh, does anyone have any ideas as to what the best techniques are for um, financial management, for example? Put yourself out there. There is no harm in asking for help because as ever, there is always someone out there who has the same question as you. It's just a case of you're going to get so much added value from making use of the potential resources and hence why I record these videos as well because it's just helping students out around the world and feel free to send this on to them as well. More than happy to. All in all, from this section here about where did it go wrong for you, we're getting down to the core of the problem and then also working out, how, well, figuring out how we're going to resolve this for next time. Thinking of it as a lesson, as we said, and this is just going to improve. The mindset I always had as a student, and it may sound a bit silly, but I really didn't mind because it just, it sparked me on every day is just, Every little bit that I was working on, whether that be the cortex, uh, the actual revision questions, flick notes, my own little notes, watching videos like this, my mindset was 1% better. I'm just getting a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit more, a little bit more. And before you know it, 
this is where I think to myself, 43 marks, 44, 45, 47, 51. Oh, yeah, and obviously we went up to 91, 92. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, James, yes. You're going to win a global prize award. I, 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 I'm not the, the most clever student in the world, but I'll always back myself. I'll always work my hardest so that at the end of the day, you can look yourself, this is the thing, before your examination, if you can look yourself in the mirror and say to yourself, I have put myself out there as much as I possibly can. I've worked night and day around my commitments. I've done all I possibly could. I've researched around the subject. I've done everything in terms of revision, cortex, lectures I've got to go to, classes, the whole lot. If you can look at yourself in the mirror before your actual examination as well, psychologically, I was always in a positive mindset. I go, I have done everything in my control to get myself as prepared as possible. And that hopefully leads to, as well, which I found, especially in the earlier exams, where the night before, I just didn't sleep well. But it's a case of oh, the sleepless nights of ACCA. But by doing this as well, I actually came to the mindset of, I've put myself out there as much as I can and it just led me to actually reduce that exam anxiety that I'm going into it actually a bit more confident but you're always going to be nervous because it matters that's the main thing but by having that honest heart to heart talk with yourself as to I've done my all I've done my all that's it I can look at the notes and say I've been through those top to tail in terms of everything and it's a case of I've done my best on it and that's all I can give. And once you have that on your mindset, on your heart, it's a case of that's it. Whew. Now, eyes on the prize, let's do the business and let's go past this exam. So that is tip number four, where did it go wrong for you? And then also how you can improve on it as well. Now, finally, 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 tip number five now, how are how are you going to change? Oh, gosh. Oh, James, James, James. Bring it back. Bring it back. How are you going to change for next time? Th this this is paramount. I, I even stuttered there because it's so important as well. First things first, you've got to write this down. You've got to write these things down so you can visually see it. And uh, or if it's if it's putting it on your phone or anything on those lines so that you see it every day, I've, I know students that put, put my notes in terms of on their backgrounds on their phone. They'll take a screenshot of it and they'll see it every day and they go, right, I've got to do some work today. Whatever works best for you, whatever reminder is. First things first, what is your study plan? This is usually one of the fundamental areas with ACCA students why they fail in the first place and the, the key thing to get down here is and the, everyone is different in terms of it this is why it's so key with uh, with different uh, parameters in your life as well you've got to ask yourself the question how much actual available time around my life commitments do I have so it, this will be different if you're say a parent or if you're just simply uh, a studying student or if you if you got to work as well Everyone is going to have different times in their day that they are free to study. So the main tip here is to actually block those out. It was a really good tip for me that I just said, no, nope, that is it. I, I'm just focusing on my ACCA studies after work at 6 o'clock till 9 p.m. I'm going to give myself um, an hour to cook some food, um, have a bit of a rest, go for a walk, get some exercise, listen to a podcast, something on those lines. And then it's a case of that, that by having that block time out, it makes me hold myself accountable as well. The next thing on there as well is just put your phone away, cut all distractions out. This is where by blocking that time, as I said, you're going to be so focused. You know you are. You've seen your number. And before you know it, productivity is going to go up and you are going to have a more effective study session. That's all that I'm, I'm interested in is a case of how productive is that study session, how much added value. And as well, it's a really good tip that you're holding yourself accountable. You physically see it in your calendar. Yes, you've had a hard day at work, but because you've got it on there, there are no excuses that you are going to do it as well. That is really key. The next thing as well is actually having a positive network around you uh, in your life. So by having this as well, it's going to be massive that if you've got people around you say, oh, yes, James, you, I think you've got this as well, you know, studying away at the weekends and, you know, let's keep positive. And this is where your actual study buddy comes into it. So my study buddy, Mikey, we used to mess each other Saturday mornings and Sunday mornings were always the best in terms of 
holding each other accountable. We just send each other messages to, well, okay, are you studying yet? I'm already up. I've had some breakfast. I've wandered down to the library, found my working environment. And you read it and you go, oh my gosh, he's already working. Back onto it straight away. Positive mindset. And also, at the end of the day, how did it go? Do you have a good day on it? Positive day? Yeah, I had a good day, but could have done a bit better. Oh, okay. Well, but um, how can you? How are we going to improve from this? Well, tomorrow my plan is whew, holding yourself accountable, positive network around you, and that productivity goes up as well because we worked out what was the actual times that we could be working, fully focused. Other things will be going on in your life. The football will be on, friends want to go out for drinks, family want time as well. But this is where you refer back to that why. What is that positive mindset that you have around you? Next thing, next thing, key, key thing on here, study strategy. Do we need to change it? Lots of students fall into the habit of just book, 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 sit, 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 consume, consume, consume. Okay. Whew. It doesn't quite work like that, okay? The, the, the mind now, in terms of concentration and again, getting that most productivity out of you, it's a case of, well, maybe, well, I always recommend is a 20 minute study session with a five minute break in terms of it. And by having a sort of cycle on here, putting your phone away, put it on airplane mode, uh, turning, turning your notifications off on your phone as well, so it's not pinging or buzzing, anything on those lines. And before you know it, your productivity is gonna go sky high. Remember, you know what to expect. You've done this exam before, you've failed it before, you know what to expect in terms of it. You're ahead of someone who's doing it for the first time. So think back and look through your notes, as we said, to collate it through and say, well, maybe I could, could consider other methods as well. So lots of ACCA students sort of shy away from using things such as flashcards, uh, mind maps as well. And as you can see from my notes down there, short and sweet, just sort of easy bullet pointed on there but I've used some colors on there blue underlined it's nice and easy to digest with all the key terms in red as well so it made me remember it more especially for the actual standards as well uh, highlighting key things different colors it is all going to help you remember these different things and flick notes can also really help the next thing is, is and you know, I don't particularly read too much into this as to advice being out there in the world about, you know, if you failed an exam, but I'm going to say it anyway in terms of sharing your knowledge about what you know, okay? So think about that as a case of you've already done the exam and maybe you can share your knowledge with someone who hasn't. By doing this, it actually reinforces your current knowledge in the actual curriculum, whether you're doing financial accounting, management accounting, audit and assurance, even though you failed it. You have knowledge in your mind from previously doing it that another student won't. So you can actually set up a FaceTime or if you're part of a class as well, teaching them about it. It helps you to regain some confidence as well that you're going, yeah, I, I know my stuff. I've just got to work on my technique and getting that work-life balance and overall lifestyle balance that is going to get me onto that 50 plus. By teaching someone else, sharing your knowledge, your confidence is going to go up and then you're going to get some momentum. Momentum is going to be key there as well, that you're going to go into those chapters in more depth. You're going to build up that positive network around you and you're going to help someone else. So you're going to increase your, uh, you know, it's nice. It's just nice in terms of it. So try that out, share your knowledge. This could be with group work. I know you could be working online, but you could set up uh, uh, different calls using video format. And let's think ahead in terms of it for the, uh, for the ACCA pun on there and to the future. Think about it that it's not a bad thing to ask for help and thinking ahead as to, well, I'm going to visualize myself passing that examination. I can visualize myself with my study buddy here passing it, seeing and visualizing that goal of getting that text from ACCA or opening up your emails to see or, or logging into my ACCA account to see that you have passed. And once you start to visualize it, think ahead, vision into it as well. You are going to have so many ticks in terms of a positive mindset that even though you failed the exam beforehand, you're probably hopefully going to watch this video now and go, man, I've, I've got some serious tools that are going to help me and I'm not actually going to think that I failed it before as well. 
So just to conclude, that is my tip number five. How are you going to change for next time? That, that is just paramount for me and working out a strategy going forward. Check out the other videos on my YouTube channel. They're definitely, definitely, double definitely going to help you. Whew. I, know, I get enthusiastic on these things. They're very important, but these are all in my mind. I've got to get it out there for you. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's video, found it insightful as well. If you have found it helpful, give it a massive thumbs up below. And also feel free to put any comments down there if it is helping you or any other videos you would like me to cover. I'm going to reply, well I already have replied, to all of those messages as you saw at the start. So for any of you who actually did drop me a message on Instagram, this video is dedicated to you and to one out there as well. So best of luck with your upcoming ACCA exam. If you would like to subscribe to my ACCA channel, the button will be below. You get access to all of my free materials and also go check out the ACCA Global Podcast where you can hear from ACCA members dotted around the world so you can benefit from their expertise and how their ACCA journey has been formed, just like yourself. Well, the best thing and the last thing I can do is just say best of luck for your upcoming ACCA examination. If you follow these tips to work it through, your mindset's going to change and you're going to actually, I'm going to say it, you're going to look forward to your next ACCA exam. And I really hope this video is that turning point that is going to get you back on the, on the right tracks to really get stuck into it and to do your best going into that examination. Well, best of luck with it. Let me know how you get on. But as always on that bombshell, I'll see you next time. Cheers.